Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream with visions in his mind as he was lying on his bed. He wrote down the dream, and here is the summary of his account. Daniel said, In my visions at night I was watching, and suddenly the four winds of heaven stirred up the great sea. Four huge beasts came up from the sea, each different from each other. This reminds us of the vision of the from chapter 2 where he saw an image with four different kinds of metal that represented four different kingdoms. So here it says four huge beasts. The first was like a lion, but it had eagle's wings. This is Nebuchadnezzar. And the eagle's wings may represent Babylon and Media. I continued watching until its wings were torn off. It was lifted up from the ground and set on its feet like a man and given a human mind. This reminds us of Daniel chapter 4 where Nebuchadnezzar was humbled and given a the mind of an animal and he ate grass for seven years. But then afterwards his mind was restored to him and after that he praised the God of heaven. Suddenly another beast appeared, a second one, so this would be Medo-Persian Empire, that looked like a bear. It was raised up on one side because the Persian became more dominant than the Medo Empire, a uh, part of the empire. With three ribs in its mouth, between its teeth, this is Lydia, yeah, Babylon, and Egypt. It was told, get up, gorge yourself on flesh. While I was watching, another beast appeared. It was like a leopard with four wings. This is, Nebuch this is uh, Alexander the Great, with four wings of a bird on its back that may represent him and his brother and his two sons. It had four heads and was given authority to rule. That may be the uh, four generals that took over after uh, Alexander died, took over the Greece, Greek, Grecian Empire. Verse 7, while I was watching in the night visions, a fourth beast appeared, frightening and dreadful. That would be Rome, and, incre and incredibly strong with large iron teeth. Again, you've got the iron, same as the, uh, uh, the last uh, metal in the... A statue from the second chapter. It devoured and crushed. Well, that's again just like it said in the second chapter. Um, it just as iron breaks in pieces all things. And it trampled with its feet wherever whatever was left. And it was different from all the beasts before it. And it had ten horns. So we're looking at Rome and we're looking for ten horns of Rome. And uh, horns are... Uh, Often, uh, we'll see, um, represent kings. And uh, while I considered the horns, suddenly another horn, a little one, came up among them. And three of the first horns were uprooted before it. So we're looking for, amongst these ten kings, we're looking for one of these kings to be special in that it uh, overthrows three kings. Uh, there were eyes in the horn like the like a man's, and it had a mouth and spake arrogantly. So this uh, this little horn that uproots three uh, speaks arrogant things. As I kept watching, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. So it seems to be, again, just like we saw in the uh, in the days of the kings of that Roman em that last empire. Again, we've got in the days of these ten kings. God's going to set up uh, a kingdom. But it says, The Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white like snow, and the hair of his head uh, like whitest wool. His throne was flaming fire. Its wheels were blazing fire. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from his presence. Thousands upon thousands served him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. That reminds us a little bit of Revelation about books being opened. So uh, anyway, verse 11, I, I watched then because the sound of the arrogant words, the horn was speaking. As I continued watching, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to the burning fire. Now the book of Revelation talks about a beast and we'll see it also, uh, the beast is thrown into the lake of fire. As uh, Verse 12, as for the rest of the beasts, their authority to rule was removed, but an extension of life was granted to them for a certain period of time. I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, we've got these different beasts, and they represent these different empires. The Babylonian Empire, the uh, 
the Medo-Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, and then you got Rome, four different empires, kind of in different geographical locations as well. Um, but it says that an extension of life was granted to them for a certain period of time. So I don't know. Let me know. Let, uh, let me know what you think that might mean in the comment section below, please. I continued watching in the night visions, and I saw one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days, so that would be God the Father, is the Ancient of Days, and one like in the Son of Man would be the Lord Jesus, and he was escorted before him. So you got the Son of Man coming to the God the Father, Ancient of Days. He was given authority to rule and glory and a kingdom. So he gets his kingdom at the time of this, uh, the Roman Empire, it seems like, from these passages here. So that those of every place, uh, I'm sorry, so that those of every people, nation, language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. You know, all these other kingdoms that we looked at were destroyed. The Babylonian Empire came and gone, is come and gone. The Medo-Persian Empire has come and gone. Grecian Empire has come and gone. Rome has come and gone. But what about the kingdom that the Lord Jesus uh, has taken? The kingdom of God. Is that come and gone? Verse 15. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was deeply distressed within me, and the visions of my mind terrified me. I approached one of those who were standing, up, standing by and asked him the true meaning of all this. So he let me know the interpretation of these things. These huge beasts, four in number, are four kings who will rise from the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Now that's interesting because we saw earlier that the a son of man comes to ancient days and receives a kingdom. But now the holy ones will receive a kingdom. But that kind of reminds us of Revelation how it says he has made, unto, uh, made us unto our God a kingdom of priests and we will reign forever and ever. So we find here that the saints receive the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. Verse 19, Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, the one different from all the others, extremely terrifying with iron teeth and bronze claws. That's a new detail he adds here. Dev devouring, crushing, and trampling with its feet whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its uh, on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three fell. The horn had eyes and a mouth that spake arrogantly and that was more visible than the others. As I was watching the horn waged war against the holy ones and was prevailing over them. So we're looking for one of these kings in Rome, seems to be, is going to wage war against the saints and prevail over them. Now we find that in the book of Revelation, we find this uh, idea of the uh, beast making war with the saints and overcoming them. It was given to him over, and it would have a space of like uh, 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 42 months mentioned in Revelation. Um, as I was watching the horn wage war against the holy ones and was prevailing over them, verse 22, until the ancient of days arrived and judgment was given in favor of the holy ones of the Most High. For the time had come, and the holy ones took possession of the kingdom. This is what he said. The fourth beast will be the fourth kingdom on the earth, different from all the other kingdoms. It will devour the whole earth, trample it down, and crush it. The ten horns are ten kings who will rise from the kingdom. Another, different from the previous ones, uh, will rise after them and subdue three kings. So, these kings, and maybe Caesars, we're looking for maybe a Caesar that subdues three Caesars. He will speak words against the Most High and oppress the Holy Ones of the Most High. He will intend to change religious festivals and laws, and the Holy, One, Holy Ones will be handed over to him for a time, and times, half time, just like the book of Revelation. So time is one year, times is two more years, so now you've got three and half a time, that's three and a half years which month-wise comes up to 42 months. So we've got a correlation there. But the court will convene, and his dominion will be taken away to be completely destroyed forever. It would correspond 
with the book of Revelation with the uh, Battle of Armageddon. The kingdom, dominion, and greatness of the kingdom under the whole, all the heaven will be given to the people, the holy ones of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will serve and obey him. This is the end of the interpretation. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts terrified me greatly, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Next time, we'll look, Lord willing, at Daniel chapter 8.